on, Triggy. Come on. Come on, Trick. Y'all ready to go inside? Give a little kiss. Hello, YouTube friends. Well, this is a little video about purses for all you ladies out there that carry purses. I went to Beaufort yesterday with my good friend and we did a little uh, tootling around as we call it. We did a little shopping too. I bought one thing uh, that I was kind of excited about. I was hesitant. I bought a purse. Now, usually I buy my purses at the thrift store for $4. And this is a good example. I, I try to find good ones. This is a really nice purse. I love the color blue and I've enjoyed it and I'll continue to use this one, I'm sure. Um, it's a good winter purse though. You know, it's kind of a dark blue. If this is the pocket where I keep my keys and my sunglasses. Easy to get to. Um, on this side, oh, and there's another zipper here, and this is where I keep my Kleenexes. <laughs> um, and on this side, this is the pocket for my cell phone and my reading glasses, which I often need together. And then on the inside, <laughs> the inside of a woman's purse, can we believe we're sharing this? Okay, on the inside, there's two major compartments, and one of them has my big old wallet. I mean, it, this has, this is a chunky wallet in and of itself. Um, and it also has, see, this is, this is what happens with purses. You have to have bags inside of bags. So uh, this is a cute little bag I have in here. And it's got, um, I keep ibuprofen and Tylenol, my COVID vaccine card, uh, ponytail holder, pen, my zip drive. Um, actually, I have two zip drives. Little things that you don't want to get lost in the bottom of your purse. Oh, goodness me. The other side has lotion, eye drops, hand sanitizer. This little bag has, um, well, I'll show you what it has so I don't have to try to remember. This is bee balm that I make. That's actually enough to take on a weekend trip. Actually, that would last me a week. That stuff goes so far. This is some of my lip balm that I make. This is a very old lipstick. I haven't worn lipstick in like, I don't know, two and a half years. <laughs> um, whoever wears lipstick under a mask, not me. I did that one time, never again. Um, and this is a little book I keep in here. And I have some Altoids in here. Here's the lotion. I mean, you know. Hmm. Okay. But everything has a place. Isn't that a blessing with a purse? So yesterday, you guys will recognize the type of purse that I bought yesterday. Cute bag. Cute little paper. <laughs> I bought this kind of bag. Okay. This is um, a fair trade bag from a cute little store in Beaufort. The opening for the strap is long enough to go over my shoulder, and the straps are kind of a nice, thick, ropey strap. strap. Um, it does have a little magnetic closure and kind of a little faux leather around the closure. One thing I do like is it has, it actually has a reinforced bottom that makes it sit on itself. And inside it does have one pocket, <laughs> one zippered pocket. I'm sure I'll never zip it up. That pocket would be a perfect size for my cell phone. I'm looking for my cell phone to see if it's the right size, but of course I'm staring at my cell phone. How many YouTube people do that every day? Okay, so the problem obviously is that I need a pocket for my sunglasses, I need a pocket for my reading glasses, and I need a pocket for my keys. I really kind of need three more pockets. And thankfully this is a bag that kind of has four sides. Okay, so it looks like this. I love the colors. Um, she had lots of different bags. Oh, the name of the store, it's in Beaufort, North Carolina, and it's called Sweet Lily Rue. Lily, L-I-L-L-Y, and Rue, R-U. This is a recycled sarong tote bag. So it's a fair trade item. Maybe I already mentioned that. Um, so I'm going to add inside pockets to this bag. Look at the colors. There was a blue one there with all kinds of blue, and my friend said, oh, there's a blue one for you, Mary Kath. And I was like, ah, my mother's been dressing me in blue because of my blue eyes. Um, sorry, look at the camera that way. Um, and I am tired of wearing blue. <laughs> I do wear it sometimes. But I love these colors. This is um, pinky, mauvey, green, and brown. The, the combination of all those brown tones in there and even some of these deep plums. I just think it's gorgeous. 
she got one that was more bronzy looking. It was brown and bronze, um, which suits her well. And I love that side. It's very busy. I want for this purse to work. I don't want to use it for a month and go, oh, I can't stand it anymore. So if I don't add pockets to the inside, I'll be frustrated. I, uh, see that there is a lot of stitching on the outside. If you can see the different squares that I've taken little pieces of sarongs and pieced them together. I could add a pocket here on the inside. I'm going to put the keys on one of the larger sides and the two glasses on the ends. The pockets will be on the inside, obviously. And I have some fabric I think will work. I'll show that to you in just a second. I kind of didn't want to add extra stitching out here. I don't know that it would show, but I was really thinking about hand stitching these pockets in just around the edges. Also, I just, my sewing machine's over there. I'm looking at her. She's covered up with stuff and I kind of don't want to get her out. It would be a whole lot faster to machine stitch this. I haven't decided yet. We'll think about that. Let me show you the fabric I'm thinking about, okay? Now these, Fabrics won't really show, so it does, it's not a big deal. But, um, and I want something lightweight and cotton that won't be any heavier, obviously, than that. This is a kind of a lavender polka dot print. I think that would work really well, and I think the colors would blend well with the inside. Let me see. See, the inside of the bag doesn't have... It, it's it's interesting. It's like it's this. Most of it is that. The bottom is that. But they had all the same. It's very interesting. I'm gonna put some work into this because they had a lot of that fabric and they saved it for the inside and they had little pieces and they used those for the outside. So there's that. I love this fabric too. Um, might work. I mean, like I said, nobody's gonna see it. So on the inside. I almost like the flowers better. This is another piece I've got. These are just little scraps. I don't keep a lot of fabric because I don't really sew much, but I like to have it for little projects. That's not terrible either. I could do one of each. This is not a big project. It won't take me long. I think it'll make this purse much more usable. If I find that I like these extra pockets, I might even add more. <laughs> um, so that only the big things are hanging in the bottom of the bag. I don't like to have a bag where you have to sit down and dump it out to find that one thing you need. I also have more little bags like this somewhere, probably in some of my old purses that I stopped using. And um, I've done that before. This is really useful. Like this is perfect size for three or four little things. All right, so that's the project for today. pieces. Now this one had a finished edge, which I'll put along the top. Okay, so I didn't I didn't actually iron that one. I did fully enclose these um, edges that I'm going to sew in, so I don't have any raw edges showing, as you see. Okay, I think I am going to do it on the machine. The outside of that purse is so busy, I don't think it's going to show, but I am going to try to pick a thread that will blend in. Uh, this one I've ironed a nice wide band at the top, and of course I'm going to have to stitch that down first before I sew it onto the um, the purse. This will be for probably uh, this will be for my reading glasses. This will be for my sunglasses. It's a little wider, and this will be for my keys. I want for this one to really stay in place, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna tack these at the top to make them stronger, and I may um, I'm gonna put this one in this way so it's not too deep, and I may put extra reinforcement here along these sides to keep it from flopping open too much so that my hand can fit in there to get the keys. 
but I might give a little bit more stitching on the sides um, to make that stronger. Let's see how this goes. I hope that these pockets and what's in them is not going to, you know, make this affect the drape of this bag and how it um, how it how it hangs and how it works. Hope they're not too heavy. All right, here we go. I'm over here at the old sewing machine and I'm I've pulled out a little bit of the white thread and laid it over top of this fabric and I don't really like the look of that. I don't know that you can see it very well from there. Let's see if we can get you closer. It just seems to be uh, it stands out too much. But I do have some bobbins that have partial um, bits of thread on them. And I like this brown one. And I like this kind of pink one. Or, yeah, kind of, it's not bright pink. It's more of a little mauve. And I'm sure I've got um, spools with that on there too. So I'm going to take this white thread out of the machine and re-thread it probably with the, the pink first. And then I'll use the brown second. This is my pretty little box that I got in Poland years ago. I just love it. This is my um, thread box. So I don't have a lot of thread, but I've got enough colors to usually do what I want to do. Um, and I did find the two that I need. If you're at all interested in how to thread up a rather old machine, this is probably about... 55. I think it's about the same age as I am, so it's in its late 50s <laughs> in its age. Um, anyway, I've got to put this pink on here. This is the tension part for the top thread. You just kind of push it over top of that little hook there, and then you have to put it back around here. So it kind of jumps up and down. it through that, come down through this point, thread it through here. I wonder who engineered this and discovered, oh, we need one more little hook on the front of this machine. I think I need to snip that end. It's not going to thread very well. I can hear my husband outside on his saw. He's working on a little house ceiling some more today. All right, so we've got that threaded. Now I need to get my bobbin thread up. So I just rotate it once while holding this thread, and it pulls it up. I can usually get it with my finger. There we go. Okay. Uh, all my settings are good for just straight stitching. I'll, if I run out of this pink, I don't know. I might just use all pink. I, I like that brown, though. Okay, so let's get started. You can see the pin line across here. Maybe you can. All across here. And you can see where they turn up here and here. I think if I go slowly, it'll be fine. Okie dokie. And I need to feel for the pin heads. What is the grid? It is, it's just above that pin. And I can even feel that underneath there. I just want to make sure I don't sew anything down that I don't want to sew down. I wanted to put some extra reinforcement in here. As it turns out, it looks like I'm going to be able to stitch in the ditch along this... Um, seam of these different pieces of the sarong, which is very handy. 
I wasn't anticipating that, but that's, and I think that will certainly catch the seam as I want it on the inside. Okay, I did decide to just stop that stitch. It was in the ditch, so it doesn't really show. And I went back to this corner, the first corner um, at the bottom, and stitched where I really wanted it to be. I'm liking this pink. I think it kind of adds a little something. But I'm so glad that I'm sewing on the right side, on the outside of the bag, instead of doing this on the inside. I think I would have left some puckering and really crazy looking stuff that I wouldn't like um, if I had not been looking what I, at what I was doing. Okay. So we're going to finish up this last side. This is more slow and finicky than I, but I'd rather do it this way than just slap it on there and regret it. I think it's pretty hard to see in all that busyness. Here's the corner right here. So there's a seam running right here. Don't know if you can see. Can you see that there's one running along the bottom there? It hides it really well. And then here's the pink one going up. You can barely see that. I'm very pleased with that. Let's look at the inside. Here's the pocket on the inside. Now, you can see I did a messy job. What did I do there? I don't know what I did there. Look at the corner down here because I wasn't watching the inside. It looks crazy. This is where I went back. Hmm. But I would rather it look like this on the inside. Than on the outside. The outside looks immaculate. So um, this is this is for functionality, not for beauty. It's a good thing I don't make these bags, or they wouldn't they wouldn't accept any of them. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna fit, I do the last two pockets, and then we'll see how this bag works. I haven't really tried it out with stuff in it yet. All right, I've got one of the eyeglasses cases in. Can you see the stitching here on the outside? Maybe you can see that one really obviously there. It went nice and smoothly on the inside, on the outside, and much better on the inside as well. I didn't get off track anywhere. It's hard to stay on a piece of fabric like that when you're not looking at it, but I did check constantly. And I don't have any wacky places where I went off track. And I stayed, I also wanted to make sure that I kept my enclosed salvage um, tacked down. So everything looks pretty good. I got one more to go. Okay, it's the moment of truth. I ran out of pink bobbin thread, like about two inches from the end, and so I had to reload, and oh, what a mess. Um, and that machine, see, this is where I ran out, right there. See that little wad? That machine is a very, very, very old woman machine, and she will sew, but she doesn't want to sew. And so um, sometimes she gets very ornery. Okay, so let's see if things fit. Where are my keys? Let's see if my keys are going to fit. Huh. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, see, that works. Okay. Sunglasses should go, oh, are they going to fit? Is it going to be big enough? Boy, I don't know. Mm. But I don't want them flopping around either. Yeah, they fit. That fits. Right in there. And now my glasses, glasses. They're just reading glasses. I have like a million pair. No, to be more honest, I have about seven pair. <laughs> Don't you hate people who exaggerate? Now this was a very skinny pocket, but it works. Look at that. They fit. Okay. Uh, oh, cell phone. I can't do the cell phone yet. Okay. This is also a good time to get rid of some of the junk in your purse that doesn't need to be there. Let's zip up the cell phone pocket. So here's the big, big dark hole. Mm, this goes in there. This goes in there. Lotion can go in there. Boy, see, I don't, I probably need one more bag for things like my eye drops. Occasionally I need the hand sanitizer. Not really. The eye drops are actually very important. Um, here's my little book. Is there anything else in here that's really crucial? I've got a zipper compartment in this purse. Is there any? There's actually, look, there's a ponytail holder in it. Really? Okay. Otherwise, well, I do have Kleenex. Maybe I need a little Kleenex bag. Let's see about that. Um, hmm. Okay. It's 
Feeling good, feeling good. Let's put it on our shoulder and see what we think. Oh, look at that. That's not bad. It's a really nice, It's some of these are just so long they hang down by your knee almost. And the straps kind of cut in, or they only have one strap. This has two straps. So you can leave it on your shoulder and open it up and look in it at the same time. I think that is a really big benefit. Yeah, see, sunglasses, cell phone pocket. If I want my keys, I can have it hanging on there and pull them out. That is great. Okay, I think it was worth all that trouble. I really do. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not great looking on the inside, to be truthful. That one's a little bright, but you have it on your shoulder. Of course, you can't see a thing. All right. Well, that was a successful project. If you've got a bag like this that's up in the top shelf of your closet because you couldn't figure out what to do with it, try a little pocket. They don't have to be as finished as mine. You don't have to be as fussy as I was. Uh, or you might be just a better seamstress than me. But isn't that a pretty bag? Look what I decided to do. I have hung my loom on the wall going into my studio. And so it's, I was also able to move some of the stuff that was on the floor there. So it's out of the way and it's no longer rattling around on the floor. Oh, it's so nice to get something hung up. You may remember this purse that I bought, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, which I have enjoyed using. I, um, I've uh, already shown you how I put new pockets in it, three new pockets. Well, I've been using it for a couple of months, and look what happened to one of the shoulder straps. The fabric just split, tore right here, and then the, the packing, the filling, uh, the batting, whatever you want to call it, the core inside of that purse has started to creep up out of it in a really bad way, and the only thing that's left holding it is that seam. That's really rough. And I was just going to put a little patch over it, but it's kind of to the point now where I can't do that. So I went looking down here and realized that the sleeve is actually open and that filling is right there. If I could get a hold of it, I might be able to pull it back down. Let's see what the other side looks like. Is it more available on that side? Now, this must be the side where it's creeping up from. Yeah, look how much empty space there is there. Mm -hmm. And I hate to say it again, but you know what's really good for reaching up inside of something and grabbing fiber and pulling it back is a crochet hook. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. This is the same crochet hook I've been using for everything. What size is it? It's a G. Mm -hmm. I'm actually doing this looking through the camera. I'm not even actually looking at... Oh. It's way up there. I just don't know if it's going to hang together. Mm. And will I be able to grab it with a crochet hook? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, yes. That is coming. A bit. Hmm. The other question is, will I be able to get the crochet hook out of it once I'm done? <laughs> hmm. See, I did get a little bit of it. See here? I just would like to, I'd really like to get it to where the fabric was at least somewhere close to meeting again. Hmm. I can get it better. I'll bring you back when I've improved the situation. Okay, I yanked and pulled on both ends with quite a bit of vigor, and I really have I've made a lot of improvement here. Actually, if I can get this, yeah, okay. So they're really close. This is now good enough that if I put a nice patch in there, I think I can hold it together. Um, of course, this is the spot on the purse that it's going to wear out first. Is um, If it's not the bottom of the purse, it's going to be what's over your shoulder. The fabric that I've decided to use, I don't have a, I don't have much of a fabric stash. Unlike some folks, I'm, I'm not a quilter, so I don't have a fabric stash. Um, but I have a little bit. And this 
color is kind of the theme color you see running through in addition to a lot of browns and a little bit of gold you see just a lot of lavenderish so i think that if i put a little patch of that on that strap um, i hated to get rid of this blue it's silly to say it but this little blue, this little patch of blue was the piece of fabric that helped me remember which way to hold the purse so that I knew which pocket to grab into for what thing. So if I put this strap over my shoulder first, I knew the keys were closest to me and the phone was further away. The sunglasses were on the left and the reading glasses were on the right. Yeah, I know it's pretty silly. So uh, I'm just going to put a little patch and hopefully I can still see that blue. Ah, all right. Uh, I'm not going to, I don't know if I'll show you this or not. Maybe we'll zip through it. How about that? Such is the repair thus far. I think I'll probably stick with it, although I feel like I should stitch around here as well. I wasn't going to do the sides, and then I realized how close this um, fold was to the exposed raw edge of this blue fabric. I think I won't have any trouble remembering which strap to put on my shoulder <laughs> first now, because this one really looks... Uh, I'm really... I mean, I know it's hand-stitched and you may think it looks junky, but I mean, look at the bag. You know, it's supposed to have this patchwork homemade look anyway. Uh, it's kind of bohemian, so this might fit right in. Um, but I'm really pleased with it. It's very solid. I like how it worked. I liked how I engineered that, uh, although I am no engineer. Okay, so there's the purse repair. Hopefully I won't have to do anything more to this purse for a while. Oh, one can hope. All right. Thanks for joining me for this little adventure. And um, maybe I'll enjoy this purse for years to come. Mm -hmm.